Excellent morning, distinguished participants. It's a pleasure having you this morning. I would like to recognize all the retired heads of service, retired permanent secretaries, retired CEOs of parastatals, retired directors, and all serving officers on this call. It is a pleasure to have you this morning on webinar for retirees. Our topic this morning is growth mindset at retirement, a result-oriented approach. Believe me, how you see retirement is very important. Retirement should be a time of joy, a time of fulfillment. You must be ready to continuously learn, to reinvent ourselves and grow. So this morning, we are going to learn a lot about how we can have a positive attitude towards retirement. Uh, to facilitate this session, we have uh, Dr. Mosaku Johnson. The doctor is not coronary. He is a PhD holder. I have his um, citation, but uh, I'm not going to read everything this morning. Um, excuse me. Okay. He, he graduated with public administration for his first degree. He did a master's in personnel psychology and PhD in organizational leadership. He's a, he's a member of many, many professional bodies. I will take some of them. Uh, chartered secretary and administrator. He's a chartered management practitioner chartered personnel practitioner and a chartered economist, a certified business sustainability practitioner, and a member of many other professional bodies. He is the founding registrar and CEO of Association of Corporate Governance Professionals of Nigeria the chairman of Euro Advisory and Governance Services. He has experience in both private and public sector. He served five years in our own uh, public service staff, Lagos State Public Service Staff Development Center. Welcome with me, our facilitator for today, Dr. Mosaku Johnson. Dr. Mosaku Johnson, if you can please go ahead with your presentation. You have the floor now. Okay. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's a pleasure to be with you this morning to uh, share experience this uh, very, very important uh, program this morning for our retirees. The title being developing a growth mindset. This is very, very important at this time. Need to adjust, and that is the basis of life, adjustment. We need to adjust from one uh, set of events to others. We need to set a new goals. Goal, the spelling of goal, 
G O A L. We need to set it. If anyone refuses to set a goal, what is telling us is that is exhibiting G O A T. I'm sure everybody knows what G O A T is. So everyone is expected to set goal from one time to the other in terms of short-term goal, in terms of long-term goal. And also we want to encourage us to find a new purpose. A life without purpose, it's like a good soup without salt. So it is very, very critical that every man, every woman uh, find a new purpose, a new meaning for their life. And also to set up uh, a or to nurture hobbies, to nurture some sort of hobbies. This is what I can do. This is what I want to do. What gives you pleasure? I believe in pleasure than uh, somebody going to do a work, a work that is not that is not happy doing. Something that is not is not really happy doing. If you're happy doing something, it's like you are playing and you are being paid for it. I tried all my life to select a job that it's like I'm playing and I'm earning doing them. So if you do a job that is like your enemy, that's a very, very serious problem. And also learn something new. Every week, every Monday, set out to learn something new. These are some of the factors that are very, very important. I know it has its own challenges, which we are going to be talking about. The objective of this session is to motivate participants to perform at their peak, make them more effective in their endeavors, make them to be more effective in their endeavors, and also to assist them to acquire high self-esteem and understand its purpose. And we are going to try to uh, equip participants with skills on how to maintain professionalism, adding new values to their lives, and also issues that relates to personal effectiveness, and so on. So these are some of the issues that we are going to be bothered about. Introduction, we must use time as a tool, not as a crush. That is what John F. Kennedy says. We must use time. Time is very, very critical, very, very scarce resource. And we must use it as a tool, not as a crutch. Time is life. If you are wasting time, you are wasting life. So nobody should even waste one minute. I don't think it is good for anybody to waste even one minute of his or her life. It is very, very critical and very, very important for every minute to be accounted for, it is very, very important. So some people say they can't, but I know that according to success, success says nothing is impossible for a willing heart. In another place, success also said that not failure, not failure, comma, not failure, low aim is crime. Say so not failure. Failure is not the problem. Low aim is a real danger. So you can. In today's world, it seems like the older you get, the more you are told that uh, uh, you know that we shape I think I I noted some people that it was after their retirement that they met in this in their generation. One of them is a man that founded KFC. It was after he retired at the age of 61 that he founded KFC. We have Obaola, founded Lead Merchant Bank, and so on that. I mean, we, we have a number of people like that. So we hear or tell ourselves things like, you are too old for that. What, uh, what is anybody too old for? It's anymore. That's a serious situation. Internet is on stage. It's, it's a very serious situation when you when you are told or you tell yourself old. 
There is something that you are too old to do. Retirement. With the right attitude, you can make the most of every stage of your life. That's why we are talking about mindset shifts on the issue that relates to our mindset, how we need to change it. So we need to find out what a growth mindset is, what for retirees, how it is important, and what are the things to adopt in retirement. So very, very important component of our lives. It is very, very important. Don't let are too old for that. There are a lot of things that you can still do. If if KFC, the guy that found the KFC can do that, and so many other people that they, they affected, they shook their nations. You can shake your nation. You can shake Nigeria at this time. So what is a growth mindset? And how do I need one? What is a growth mindset? Yes, sorry. We are, I think we have some. Uh... All right. So uh, I was talking about the fact that they are fixed mindsets from other people that, okay, once this person cannot do anything again, how do I think some of the issues that we, we have to look out for? All right. We, we have growth mindset that talks about developing our intelligence, our skill, our ability. But we have some other people who are fixed in their mind that they cannot do anything again. According to principle of neuroplasticity, you can create new neural pathway until the day you die. You can create a new pathway. You can start a new thing. So that's that's why there is a new mindset and look for ways to improve yourself. It's very, very important. So how do we adopt a growth mindset? One, embrace challenges. There will be challenges and there is a need to embrace those challenges. Then practice mindfulness. What is mindfulness? Mindfulness is about intuitive thinking. It's about thinking. It's about cogitating and telling yourself from the sphere of uh, cogitation that you can achieve this, can do this, you can do so many things. Then the third one is to set goals, to set goals and enjoy the process, set goals. And there's a need for everybody to live up to their potential. I remember several years ago in Port Harcourt, I was speaking to the senior uh, military officers in Port Harcourt. I said, I'm afraid many of you will go to burial ground and your intellect will be intact. And that I should explain. I say all the all your life, you have been in the military for over 30 years. All that you have been in the military is regimentalization. You have never made use of your intellect. You have never made use of your intellectual capacity. And I encourage some of them, you close by two, go and do something. Of course, it is not in congenial with the military practice to do farming and some other territorial goals and some of those things. And some of them started to do it. One of them come in Ibadan uh, very recently that you come and uh, do something, I should come and commission this uh, farm in Ibadan and so on, that is making use of, of his intellect. Sorry, I was saying that don't let your mindset limit you. Our limitation in most. Some years ago, a friend of mine came, he said, Femi, this icon, I cannot pass it. I've sat for it. Uh, this is the third time I'm sitting for the same paper. I cannot pass it. I said, Benga, tell you about Shibuluri Eshi, Oman Tunguni, who are reclaimed icon. And you are saying, I can't. You must make sure that you go to receive the papers and ensure that you pass it. Eventually, he went to receive the paper. Eventually, he submitted the paper in his office and he was promoted from assistant accountant to zonal accountant, covering his 
state could not, but I told him that it can. And this is the most important challenge that we have. Major said it has told us we cannot, and we cooperated with it. When it tells us we cannot, and we cooperate, that is the problem. So time is very, very important. Time is very, very important. It's a capital that any human has. And the only thing it can't afford to lose, Albert Einstein talks about time, is, the, is really the only capital that we have. Coins is not capital. Currency is not capital. Time is capital. So how are we using it? Your future is created by what you do today, not tomorrow, by what you are doing. Little things you are doing today, setting goals, putting things together, learning new things, especially now that we are in information super highway. And somebody say, oh, how can I learn IT? How can I? Look, it does not matter your age. You can still learn coding. You can learn robotics. You can learn artificial intelligence. These are the things that basically brings money now. These are the things that actually create wealth for people now. IT is the way to go. If anybody cannot learn IT, can learn so many other things. Even at retirement. So at retirement, there is a need for personal development. You can't just go and sit down at home. <laughs> you, can't, you can't afford to go and sit down at home. I, I know of my two uncles. They are popular Nigerians. When they retired, one of them was just making trouble all over the place. At least he's doing something. And another one is just, yes, the two of them. I, if I, I'm going to mention the names of two of them. After they retired, they didn't go and sit down. If you don't even have anything to do, I say go and start making trouble, positive trouble. Somebody like Wale Shoinka, after he retired, you see what, all over the place, when he says something, everybody begins to comment on it. Or Pastor will say something, after he retired, everybody will begin to comment on it. They didn't just go and sit down in their farms or in their houses. They are doing something. So at retirement, it's not, look, it's, it's, retirement is about government uh, milestone. It's a government um, uh, baseline that, okay, after 60 years, you go to your house. But that is not the end of your own life. It is retirement with government, not retirement with your life. So you must develop your social, emotional, and mental uh, areas. General, this, this is very, very, very critical. Dennis Watley says, personal development is the belief that you are worth the effort, time, and energy needed to develop yourself. You have all this. You have the effort. You have the time. You have the energy needed to put all these things together. So why do we have to stop? Why do we have to say, oh, I cannot do it? I, I, I don't think uh, I, I like that statement. Statement of I can't. Pessimistic statement. I don't really like those statements. I want someone to be able to say I can. Even when you are looking at challenges, when you are looking at someone to say I can, because him is crime. So what is mindset? I said failure or success actually eat inside our mindset. So mindset is a mental attitude that determines how you will interpret and how you will respond to situation. It's your mindset that will enable you to interpret situations. And it, it is also the uh, cause for responding to, to those situations. Mindset, intelligence, and talent are fixed at that. And of course, people, people talk about uh, uh, issues that relates to uh, destiny. They say, this is my destiny, and so on. This is my destiny. That guy who say, this is my destiny, and is begging on Harlem. If he had gone to school, his destiny would have changed, and so on. So the fixed mindset is that, oh, it has been fixed, that this is what I'm going to be, and that is the end. I cannot do anything. Growth, intelligence, and talent. And that is a growth mindset. If you believe that you can do it, then everything will fall into order. So it's about attitude. It's about attitude. It's about how we are going to respond to situation. 
So mindset, fixed and growth is one. And you fix your mindset or you decide that you are going to grow. You are going to establish a, a, a tentacles. You are going to bring significance, not only to your life, but to the life of other people. So it depends on how you want to choose, what you want to choose. You can choose fixed because, okay, that's the end of me. I, I'm going to go home. I'm going to be sleeping. I'm going to be waiting for the day of my death. Or you are going to say that I'm going to shake this generation before you are resuming by eight or thereabouts and you are closing by four or thereabouts. But today now you are not resuming anywhere, anywhere. You have all the time, all the time to shake the world. And that's a fantastic capital for anyone. And if you decide to bring growth, mindset, everything will support it. Everybody will support you. But if you say, I cannot do it, of course, of, you will also be supported. Another one is paradox of praise. When you are doing something, if people praise you, you tend to be encouraged. But I want to say that the best encouragement is self-encouragement. The best motivation is self-motivation. When people praise you, they don't praise you, either they motivate you, they don't motivate you, you go ahead and do all that you need to do. Then the, uh, the third part is what you can do. You can do so much. You can do so many things. So many things you can do. You can do television program. You can do entrepreneurial project. You can do a lot of volunteering work. So many things you can do. In fact, you can set up an NGO that is taking care of a particular part of the, of the, of the society. You can learn how to write a, a proposal for funding from international donor agencies. You can do so many things you can do. So what kind of mindset do you have? That's the question we need to ask. What kind of mindset do you have? Do you have a, a growth mindset which says, I can learn anything I want to learn when I'm frustrated? I want to challenge myself. When I fail, I learn through the failure and I move on from there. Tell me, I try hard. If you succeed, I'm inspired. My effort and attitude determine everything. So everything is determined by our attitude. I want to learn, I want to grow, I want to achieve so many things. And you can set a goal for yourself. You can set a goal that within now, between now and next year, this time, I'm going to be doing this. I would have achieved this. Or you can have a fixed mindset. I'm not good at it. I'm going to give up. I don't like to be challenged. When I feel I'm not good, and so on. So it want to be. So yesterday's theory, intelligence. See, we are born with intelligence, but are we using the intelligence? Is the main issue about this life. Alfred, Alfred Binet invented the first usable IQ test. And he talks about yesterday's theory. No matter how much you learn or how hard you work, your intelligence stays the same. That was yesterday's theory. So this theory says that your intelligence grows. It grows. And especially in this era of digitalization, in this era of robotics, in this era of artificial intelligence, so many things have been learned. We have seen that even, even some uh, professors, they are ill, ill literates, ill literates. If somebody cannot respond to this era of information superhighway, it's likely to be ill literate. It's literate but it's illiterate. So everybody must reinvent himself, must be ready to learn, must, be, must make himself or herself available to learn new things. Uh, one of the political leaders, Winston Churchill, he failed so many times, he repeated a grade during elementary school. He was placed in the lowest division of the lowest class. Do you think his parents were worried about his potentials? Of course they were worried, but later he became a great leader. 
I don't know if you have read about Abraham Lincoln. There's nobody that is born that has entered into the uh, altar of mankind that has failed more than Abraham Lincoln, but eventually he became a success. In fact, he, in fact, he was born by a responsible father. He faced so many times at election at everywhere, but eventually became a great political leader. So failure is not the issue. The issue is about what am I going to do? What goal am I setting for myself? Uh, Beethoven teacher called him a hopeless composer initially. If someone said that, said that about your child, would you suggest your child try a different activity? He has failed many times, but he became the greatest composer ever seen in the annals of mankind. So failure is part of the business. Warren Buffett, second richest man in the world, failed to get into Harvard Business School. He failed the entrance exam. What if he took that to mean he should not be in business? So what do we have today? He's still alive, affecting his generation over 80 years, and he's still doing so many great things. And he's also involved in so many uh, uh, philanthropic endeavors all over the world. So it is not, it is not failure. It is low aim that is crime. So the growth mindset, the growth mindset says people are made, not born. You can be born by the richest man in the world. You can eventually become poor. You can eventually become a derelict. So people are made, and this is very, very important. And when we are talking about the issue of parenting, we, we, we are so bothered about so many things that is going on today. Most of these are charlatans, hoodlums, miscreants are a product of irresponsible parenting. So people are, are basically are made. People are made by nurture, by their environment, by what they learn and by what people teach them and so on. So today's theory is different from yesterday's theory. Today's theory, quality that can be changed and can be in, can, that can be developed. So that's what you have in today's theory. Everything can change. You can change yourself from point zero to point million. You can change yourself from every state to uh, the highest octave. This is very, very important. So your growth mindset, it's about 35% ability and 65% effort. 35% of your ability in your growth mindset. And it is about 65% effort. So effort is very, very important. Laziness, uh, imbecility, hmm? uh, pessimistic attitude does not have a place in this. So when we are talking about growth mindset, we need to put in effort. We need to study. We need to research. We need to invent. We need to be innovative. We need to be creative. So these are some of the factors that are very, very critical today. So brain is malleable. It is pliable. It is able to change. So you can change. You can change your, your brain. Somebody, uh, I, I read a book several years ago. That guy was an area boy at Yanopaja. He was an area boy at Yanopaja. And he tried to do GC, he failed, and so on. Eventually, he went for lectures. He couldn't pay. He was just sitting down at the back, listening to what they are saying because he could not pay. He could not even contribute. Eventually, he was able to pass the GC. Eventually, he became a medical doctor. He went to UCH, became a medical doctor, and so on. So from that brain that cannot catch anything, that cannot assimilate anything, that guy became a medical doctor and he, is, he was doing well for himself at that point. So it is very, very important to know that we can fly, we can change. The only problem with people refusing to change is that they will continually be in change. C-H-A-I-N, they, they will continually be in change. And I don't think this is good for anybody to be static. 
to be in one place, to be permanent, to be unchanging, to be pessimistic about life. No, 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 it cannot, cannot work at all. So what are the steps to developing a growth mindset? Number one, learn, 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 and learn. Learn, 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 and learn. Learn, learn everything. He that is tired of learning is tired of living. Number two, realize hard work is key. Hard work is key. Many people, they are not used to hard work. You can work in the place for several years and so on. No, not much is demanded from you. But when you want to have a growth mindset, you must be ready. You must be ready to work hard. You must be ready to work hard. When I was at the Nigeria Institute of Management, I was heading the training uh, uh, functions there. Somebody was telling me that, do they say they are not going to pay your salary, that you are running up and down all over the country like this? I said, basically, I'm salary alone. I'm here to contribute my quota to my nation. I'm here for posterity. And up to today, the hard work I put into the place is still there, written in gold in that place. All the years I spent at the Nigeria Institute of Management, I was the best staff of the year throughout. Throughout. So hard work is very, very important. In fact, when I got there, I was told that if I cannot bribe, if I cannot be corrupt, if I cannot uh, do some um, kickbacks and so on, I will not be able to get consulting assignments, I will not be able to get training assignments and so on. And I told them, I said that all I needed to do was to work 10 times harder than normal human being. And I did that, and I was able to get every accolade. And I was the best staff of the year throughout, and I didn't bribe anybody with one naira. And I put down so many things that has never been done in that place, and the record is still there to today. So realize hard work is key. Then face setbacks. If there are setbacks, face it. Face it. Those are the challenges. Those are the challenges. Some of the challenges might be struggling to switch off from work. It, it's a challenge. You know, you are resuming every day in a particular work. And now you are going to be on your own. You are going to be in your house. It, 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 it can be a challenge. You are not waking up to go to that work. It can be also that more time is in your hand now. You have so much time. You don't know what to do with the time and so on. It can be also that you are losing identity before they are calling you director, so 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 director, director, senior special assistant, and so on. But now you are just ordinary man. <laughs> and so it's, it's a challenge that you need to overcome with another, another uh, emblem of prestige. Hmm? Losing identity. Some, some challenge can also be depression. You have to bounce out from the depression and move on with enthusiasm. So at the first, you don't succeed. You are normal, because it's normal. Every man at some point has failed in one way or the other. But Pastor me, Allah say, the glory is not lying in that a man will fall, but the glory lies in the fact that when and it fall, rises up again. So it is very, very important. So hard work is the key. Putting a lot of effort into learning and working hard is the key. I cannot tell you that growth mindset, it's about just sitting down, just <laughs> drinking your tea, having your coffee, and so No, it's about hard work. The other, I have to work as well. four minutes more, more, sir. How many minutes more? How four. many minutes more? Four, four. minutes. Wow. Yes, please. Wow. When I thought I have like uh, four hours more, okay, no problem. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so to develop a growth mindset, focus on effort and persistence, despite setback, choose difficult tasks, focus on strategies and reflect on different strategies that work, focus on learning and improving, seek challenges, work hard. These are very, very important issues that we have to look at it. So you, you have to look at it. The, 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 what are the what is the response when faced with failure or challenge? Do not pay attention to learning. Might be the issue. Lose your lose self esteem. Some have lost their self esteem there because of course their living job, their title is no more there, and so on. And they are looking for their entitlement and so on. So you have to look at it. Believe it proves something stable about yourself. So the response the response should be focus on learning. Maybe I'll be rounding up with this. Focus on learning rather than how 
they feel. Pay attention and do better in future. Try new ways of doing things. Try new things. Self-motivating. And I've said it, and it cannot be emphasized too emphatical, that the best motivation is self-motivation. So higher self-esteem is very, very important. Belief in your ability. Belief in your ability. So the, the difference between fixed and growth, we have talked so much about it. Uh, uh, just to remind us again, those with a fixed mindset view effort as a reflection of low intelligence. Growth mindset uh, see effort as a necessary part of success. Fixed, hard work means I don't get it. I'm on intelligent. Growth, they try harder when faced with setback. Fix, effort, lack of ability. Growth, effort, success. They use effort to overcome difficulty. So this is very, very important. So I think I, I have to uh, pause there. I have to pause there for uh, the coordinator to uh, take charge of the uh, session. I thought I have like four hours more, so no problem. <laughs> Thank you so much, Dr. Mosaku. Thank you. You know, if you if if you leave him, he can talk for the next four hours, like he said, and he will not repeat any word. <laughs> so thank you very much for that loaded uh, presentation. Very insightful, very inspirational. I I got a lot of nuggets from uh, from that presentation myself and they are going to be sharing with us. He said, we shouldn't say we are too old. We shouldn't say anything like that. Don't say I'm too old. Yeah? He mentioned examples of people who succeeded. After, after 60, you know, the founder of, uh, what's, the what's the name of that company yes. again? KFC, yes. It's somebody who succeeded after 65. We need to have the right attitude. He said we can still shake Lagos State after retirement. We can still shake Nigeria. He said if you can't find anything to do, make trouble, but positive trouble. That one got me. <laughs> Say something that people will keep on debating about. He said to adopt a, a, a growth mindset, you need to embrace challenges. Practice mindfulness, set goals, and enjoy the process. Uh, he also mentioned that you can reinvent yourself. You can still learn so many things. You can learn AI. You can learn robotics. Those are the things really now, and they are giving, they are making money. You know. And then he also. He also said failure is not the issue. The issue is low aim. When you have low aim, when you fail, you should persevere. Uh, you mentioned somebody who was uh, an area boy who eventually became a doctor. That is a lot. That's a lot. It means that anybody can do anything. He said, the fact that you cannot improve your intelligence is, is, is an old theory. Your brain can change. You can see challenge yourself to, to achieve greater things even after retirement. He said, the steps you need to take to have a growth mindset is to continue learning, learn, 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 and learn. He said you should be hard working. Hard work is very key. And then face setbacks. So many things he said. I'm sure some of us, we have jotted down our points. We have uh, uh, jotted the questions that we are going to ask. So I'm going to give us that opportunity to ask our questions. I still see more retired, retired permanent secretaries that joined. I welcome you all to this call. Yes, I'll be here. You can type your question. You can ask by voice. Uh, 
I'm still expecting our questions. Nobody seems to be asking any question. Okay. Can we can we have a Dr. Mosa to go ahead for maybe another 10 minutes and then we close? No questions. Nobody is signifying. Nobody is typing any question. So Dr. Musa, you can go ahead for another 10 minutes. Let's give you another 10 minutes. Please unmute. OK. All right. Let me share this slide again. OK, sir. All right. Okay. So, in developing our uh, growth mindset, we need to also embrace personal development. We have to uh, creatively develop our personal development. I can see one hand up, but we'll take care of that later. The first aspect is improving your self awareness. Your self aware. What can you do? What are the things that comes home with you? You have to look at the second aspect is knowing and building your own identity. This is very, very important. One must have to build his or her own identity. Let somebody know you for something. Let everybody say this person, this is what it can be. In fact, when federal government is looking for somebody in that area, let and be pointed to you that this person is the one that you need to look for. Build your own identity. Then discover new talents, discover new talents, some hidden talents. Like I told, I told the senior military people in, the, in this country that they will go to, I'm afraid that they will go to burial ground and their intellect will be intact because they have never made use of it. So you have to look at it and you have to see those hidden talents that you have. You have to develop it because you have so much time to yourself and you have to bring so many uh, things out. And in bringing out your development process in bringing out this uh, process first of all define success what success is to you when you see success when you achieve success or what do you think success is all about identify success and ensure that you know that exactly this is what success is some people to them success is money some people to them success is when they shape their nation so it depends on what success is to you then on the other hand, self-awareness is very, very important. You have to be aware of yourself. Many people throughout life, they, are, they don't even know who they are. They cannot even predict themselves. They don't even understand who they are. Then self-management is very, very important. Then evaluate your progress. It is very, very important that at the start for the exam. Today, I'm sure you can cross from primary three to primary four today without uh, passing the exam and so on. But you have to evaluate yourself, know what you have done, what you have achieved, how you are able to do, what are the learning curves, what are the mistakes that you need to correct, and so on. And these are the features of personal development. First of all, you need to know where, where am I now? Even at, at retirement, you need to know where am I now? Where am I? Okay. Um, a retired person, then identify existing skill 
and qualifications. Some of us, we've had some qualifications that can actually generate a lot of income, but we have discarded them because salary is coming. Now it is time for us to bring out those qualifications, those skills and experience, then identify your strength, identify your strength, then identify your weakness. And you have to also conduct SWOT analysis on yourself. You need to conduct it in, in the sense that you want to convert, you want to do conversion. Converting weakness to strength, converting threats to opportunities. All the weakness you have, convert them to now, convert them to strength. And this is the most important part of that analysis. So you have to bring it to bear. So the next question is for you to ask, where do I want to go? Where do I want to go? Identify long-term aims. Identify future requirements. Then the skill and qualification that will take you there. If you have identified that, okay, this is exactly what I want to do. This is what I want to achieve. This is my long-term aim and so on. So you have to now sit down and put those things that are needed. In, in, those, in those areas, which is very, very important. In fact, it's, it's a time that people go to uh, do new course, new learning, new uh, skills, and so on, that can be able to make uh, people to, to uh, be able to do well. I, I think in Nasarawa, was it not in Nasarawa, I saw a lady after she retired as a teacher, she now went to learn fashion designing and so on. And uh, she's doing so, so, so much herself in Nasarawa, IKD or something. That, that's why the call I was in the place around December last year. And she's doing so much. She has a job. She has even people that are learning from her now and so on. So we have to look at it. But the most important thing is key, key, key. Keep educating yourself. Key. Keep educating yourself. He that is tired of education is tired of living. Keep educating yourself. In fact, even Mr. Professor himself must sit down now and start to educate himself. You have to be able to convert that chemistry to something. You cannot be a professor of mechanical engineering and your vehicle stops on the way and you cannot do something about it. This is not the time. This is now the time to understand that you need to keep on learning. You cannot stop learning. This is the time for everybody to know. Then the, the future that will take us there, how am I going to get there? What am I, what is the, what is the uh, kind of vehicle I'm going to use to get to where I'm going, setting timeline for me to achieve it, then setting short-term goals. So you have to look at it. Where am I going to go? How am I going to get there? What are the things that will take me there? And this uh, COVID-7 habit comes to mind when we are looking at how to get there, how to actually achieve all that we set out to achieve. First, he said, be proactive, be proactive, not reactive, be proactive. Proactive is the grandfather of innovation. Be innovative, be innovative, be proactive. Number two, begin with the end in mind. Look at what you want to achieve. If you want to shape the whole nation, look at what you want to do before you first start. Then put first thing first, prioritization. Think win-win. Win-win is that somebody will win, you also win. Win-win is not that you are the only one that should be winning everything. Winning is that you are contributing to the society. Winning is that you are giving even part of your resources to help other children, to help other people. Then seek first to understand and then to be understood. Then synergize. What does that mean? B to B and B for B. B to B means business to business business for business. Today, now we have told the people in the industry, you cannot do it alone. There has to be synergistic alliances. You have to work with other businesses, B to business, business to business, then business for business. And that is how everybody can grow. Then sharpen your soul, sharpen your soul, your skill, your skill, your attitude, your, your uh, professionalism, you have to sharpen it. So this is what this man, uh, as to say, then you need to look at your uh, personality. What is your personality type? It will help you to be able to see some of the areas that will help you to grow and to leave the peace mindset behind. So four types of personality. The first one is driver. Driver. This guy is competitive, demanding, determined, strong will, purposeful, focus on result, take charge, quick decision, likes challenges. Then the, the second one is uh, expressive man, 
social, dynamic, demonstrative, enthusiastic, persuasive, motivative, inspiring, involving, create excitement. So that is that man. Another range of personality is analytic man. Is 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 analytic in his approach to everything. Is cautious. Is very very cautious. Is precise. He asks questions. Is deliberate. Is formal. Put it down. Let's put it on paper. He values logic. He commits slowly. He doesn't just go in to do anything. He, he looks at it logically, and, and see if it will pay at the end of or not. Then the fourth uh, personality type is amiable man. This man is caring, is encouraging, is sharing, is patient, is relaxed, cooperative, seek agreement, provide support, communicate trust. Trust is very, very important as well. So you have to look at yourself in which area that you basically fall in, in, in this particular uh, uh, area, then from there you'll be able to understand this is where you are going and this is the kind of person you are. You have to look at yourself in this four range of personality. Who are you out of this? So from there it will help you to be able to see what you can be able to achieve. So what are the, what are the self-improvement guidelines that we can bring to be a start now? Start now, start today. Many of us are here now. We are going to procrastinate. You have to think of what you want to do. There are so many uh, areas of uh, ideas that we can bring to the table. So many ideas that we can bring to the table. Some of us, we are going to be consultants. We have a lot of skill right from where we are working. Our work experience has given us a lot of skills. So all we need to do now is to convert that work experience to consulting area. Then also, all that we need to learn new skills, new things, and so on. And we, we, we have to utilize our time in a very, very uh, profitable manner. Start small. Focus on, the, on your highest priority. Involve others to keep you on the course. Don't give up. Initially, you may fail. It is normal. It is usual, it is usual that you can fail. And I've told you what success says, not failure, not that failure is a problem. Low aim to, to give up is a, is a problem. So the guidelines continue, stay focused on your goals. Stay focused on your goals. Review your goals every day. If I write your goal at the, at the top of your bench, that is the goal you want to achieve. So many people write goals, they did not achieve it. So, so many people say, I want to do this, I want to do that but they are not doing anything. And that is why they say that the richest place on that is burial ground. So many unfinished assignments, so many goals that are never, you never have finished around us, sir. So it is very, very important. Review your goals every day, acknowledge your improvement. And let every success trigger a new goal. You can fail initially. There is no way that everything will be smooth right, but have a goal. If your goal is that, you want to uh, write proposals to United Nations, to UNDP, to MacArthur Foundation, to fund so many projects. You can face, they can say no, they can say no, but don't say, oh, since two uh, organizations have said no, I'm not going to go for that. No, you have to continue to go. Then you have to take action. Manage your time, maintain self-discipline, maintain perseverance. This is very, very important. And I must add that in all this, let us be ethical. Let us be ethical. As a corporate governance person, I used to talk about our teammates in corporate governance, which is very, very important. We call it FAT. In all this, we have to apply what is called FAT, F-A-R-T. F, fairness, A, accountability. R, responsibility, and T, transparency. In all that we are doing, we have to uh, put that at the back of our mind. And the connotation of all is that we are ethical in our dealings. We have had so much report about unethical behaviors, unethical issues, and so on. So when we are putting this together, we are going to shape the world. And finally, food for thought. Successful people have the habit of doing things failures don't like doing. But this like is subordinate 
to the strength of their purpose. Success will have the habit of doing things that failure will not even touch. So most of the things that failures refuse to touch are the things that basically are giving people a lot of impetus in life. But I imagine that the drug that will heal the sickness quickly is always bitter. So it is very, very important that we move on, we stand up to the challenges, we beat the challenges, we create a lot of space for ourselves, we have a lot of time, 24 hours in a day. We put so much into it. And we tend towards those things that we put into it are the things that should tend towards shaking our society, making our society, affecting our society, bringing a very, very strong impact into the society. So this is very, very important. So thank you very much for all our time. <laughs> Thank you very much, sir. So we can now take our questions. I, I think I saw a retired permanent secretary signifying to either ask a question or to make contribution. Mrs. Yetunde Odeja, kindly unmute, ma, and go ahead with your contribution. Please unmute, ma. Okay. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Um, and congratulations Good to our morning, head of service. I wish him all the best. As I wish the 21st head of service all the best in his new career, too, and all of us. Uh, Dr. Thank you very much, ma. Masaku Johnson has really. Good really morning, ma. Good morning. Thank you so much for the uh, super delivery of your papers. You Thank are, you so my, much, man. My, I don't want to ask questions because you said a lot that even the deaf should have learned from all of them. But I just want to comment that your session today has fired me up. Thank you so much. As Thank a person, you, man. I, I, uh, by the time I was retiring, I was going to publish, to start publishing books. I did one. But along the line, life happens. I buy it into fabric sales. But every day, I have so many topics on my head. I have so many books I still wanted to write. But it's like, mm. Mm, let me face this one. Let me, but all that you have said today has made me to go and bring the, the, um, the equipment I bought, midgets, to start yes. recording things. And I have them right away with me. After this session, I'm going to start and uh, seek Absolutely. for people who can transcribe, transcribe and do everything. Likewise, you mentioned something about NGO. Yes. And I had worked with the uh, technical department when growing up in service. And mm. I heard that thing about NGOs and uh, seeking out how uh, United Nations and organizations could, could fund some, but yes. I just let it decide. Now, you have really energized me. And I believe that many of us too will have remembered one or two things that they could do, but keep postponing. So I want to thank you so much for this that you have brought out. And I want to thank the uh, the director of post service department too for, for bringing up robust discourse so that uh, all of us that are retired will gain from it. And like I used to say, please allow people who are still in service to, to be attending this program so that they will have been well prepared before they, they, they retire and they will just eat the ground running immediately. Thank you all. God bless us all. Thank you, Dr. Mas uh, Masako. God bless you. Thank you, ma'am. God bless you, ma'am. Thank, Thank you, you very much, Ma. If I can comment on that, serving officers are also on this call. We give oh, the beautiful. invitation to them. Beautiful. So Thank they, you. They, they are free to, yes, to join. Yes. Thank, Thank you very you. much, Ma. I'm happy right. that you are fired up, Ma. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Seriously. I have another person here, Pastor Sholanke Abayomi. Please unmute. Yes, ma. <laughs> Thank you, Ma. Go ahead. Good morning, Ma. Question or comment? Ma. 
Good morning, sir. Okay. Good morning, dear. Yes. Uh, this is quite interesting. Like, like the woman reacted. In fact, we are fired. We are energized. We are inspired by the teaching. And we thank the head of service. We thank the, our woman there. And we thank God for the resource person. We are really experimenting us. That we should not say, I can't do this. I'm old for that. It is very good. But my question is, where well, we are talking of somebody 70, 80 to go into an investment, where well, we, we never thought that God owns the life. How long? Where well, is that something at the age of 75 or 80? For how long you will live? That's the question. So we must always think about giving life. Then also, you have said we learn and learn and learn and do a new skill. These are very good things. You even mentioned a woman in Adamawa who learns um, fashion design. I think I'm right. Nasarawa. Am I right? Nasarawa. Yes, who learned a Nasarawa. fashion design? Nasarawa. Thank you. So that's so that we can start something even at our retirement age of 60 or having worked for 35 years. That's what you are saying. But of recent, I have okay, let me just say this. I retired as a director of education on level 17, and I'm earning about 300,000. Sorry, let me also add this. That woman said we should take those in service to imbibe all this we are teaching now. It's better for them to just use that word. Those things in service, earning money. Yes, like I was saying, 300,000. So by that, if I want to get a loan from, I can get to tens of millions. But I never borrow money from the bank. I never get loan from the bank when I was working because I don't need it. The, I rely on my salary. But now I retire as a director on level seventeen. They are paying me seventy-five thousand naira monthly. Seventy-five thousand naira monthly. So and I want to do a project. You know that money cannot do anything. It cannot even feed the family except God grace. You understand? Now I now went to the bank saying, please. I need a loan of just 500,000. Before, like I said, before I never have bought, because I have enough salary, 300,000 to do whatever I have been doing. So the bank now look at what I'm earning as a retired person. They say 75,000 that they can't give me that loan. That my salary is too low to get that loan of just 500,000. So you are talking about learning skill, learning skill, learning thing. We need money to do this. How do we get the money? Please, you should help us to do that. And so you can't borrow money here and there is. Is it feasible? Is it possible? Like the one I just told you now. I just approached the bank. I need just 500000 They look at my salary. 70, they say, you are, they say you are retired. I say, yeah, we are a pensioner. They saw it there. The money they are paying me monthly is 75000 naira. They said they can't give me the loan of 500000 Because what I'm earning is too low. So how do we solve the problem of learning things? Learning things. I got someone who wants to become a doctor today, or you want to become something. Do you need money to invest to do it? How do we get the money? Thank you. That's <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank yes, for sir. Yeah, yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, Abayomi is my second name. My, the, my parents named me Olufemi Abayomi. Yes. Thank you so, so much, sir. Abayomi, that, yeah, God is the one that was the yeah. people have appointed right. or that God keeps us alive. Thank you, sir. Yes. Yes. First thing you mentioned was that how can somebody start a business when it's already old? With I eight, told you that. Hmm? Maybe, yes. you are, maybe you are mood, sir. I'm saying yes. that, all right, nobody gives life. And nobody knows when the life can go. You may think that you are not going to live much longer and you live, live much younger. And I want to establish it that when you start a business, it is mostly legacy business. You want to leave legacy behind. In the last training, I established three stages of life, stage of survival, stage of success, and stage of legacy, which is significance. If you are starting business at that age, all you need to do is to put in place succession planning and so on. I have asked the richest man in the whole of Africa. I asked him face to face. I said, success without successor. I told him he's a, uh, he's suicidal. I said, what is your succession planning model? 
I said, after you, what next? And he said, the group MD of his corporations will answer to my question. The man answered, I wasn't satisfied, but people clapped and so on. People clapped, but I wasn't satisfied. The same man that answered the question, I last year late, I was watching television and I saw his burial ceremony and so on. That's the man that answered the question. I'm saying this to say that when you start a, a business, you have succession. Law talks about the fact that there is a separation of the owner from the business. You start the business not only for yourself, but for the society at large, for the society to, to raise people, to uh, get people to get what you call a, a, a salary, to get a monument from that business and so on. And that business should outlast you. I got bothered because in Nigeria, as soon as the business owner dies, the business goes to burial ground with the owner. And I started to work on it. And I discovered that I listed a lot of companies, Mederibe, MK Abiola's uh, business, Kennedy uh, Lichuku, I listed about 50. As soon as the owner dies, the business dies. I said, no, it's not supposed to be. That's our mentality that this business, we have to take it, then when we die, that's the end of the business. And I looked at the, the 10 oldest companies in the world, four of them are in Japan. They are 1,500 years and the business are still in existence. Why are they still in existence? The owners, they have died, but the business still continuing. So these are the mindset that I want people to have about business. Then you talk about how do one raise money to start business? I remember I was, lecturing at the Lagos Poly at a point. And my course was EDP, Entrepreneurship Development Project. That was what I was lecturing at that time. And my students asked me and said, now you have taught us about entrepreneurship and so on. Where do we get the money? I said, I'm going to tell you where to get the money. I don't want you to go and borrow money. Of course, I told them you can borrow money and do business that you know that is going to prosper, no problem. I don't want to go and borrow money. What I want you to do, I say, and I ask my students, this is very practical, that's me. I ask my students, I say, do you know a lucky? They say they know lucky. Do you know Aja? They say they know Aja. Do you know Areco? They say they know Areco. I say they are doing building construction in Areco. They are doing building construction in Lekki. Go and be a laborer for one year. Save money. The money, in fact, when you save, you are, at that time, they are paying 1,500 to Libra. Save 1,000 in a day for one year. You get money to start your business. I don't believe in borrowing to start business, but I mean, we can borrow money to start business. So, but personally, when we are starting our body called Association of Corporate Governors, when I was starting, I started with five staff. I didn't borrow any money. I didn't start with one naira. That same month, the salary of staff were paid. So all you need is skill. When you want to raise money, what you need is skill. When you have one skill that you can sell, when you are selling that skill, you are going to get impetus. You are going to get money to save, to start the business we are talking about. On the other hand, you go to bank. Banks say that your retirement entitlement cannot make you to borrow money. All you need to do is to put yourself in, a, in, in, in one work or the other, even after retirement, save money from it. Or you have one skill that you want to sell. You have a skill that you want to sell. Save money from it. Then, like I think I said it during the lecture, I said, start small, start small. Then from there, you begin to grow the business. And that is how I feel that people can start their business. You can, you can use your skill, you can sell your skill. Like for, for me, for instance, I have a number of things I can do. There's what we call board evaluation. If I evaluate a board, I'll get paid there. Yeah. If I train a board, I'll get paid. If I do some of those things, I'll get paid. I register businesses for people and so I get paid. If then I, I train a board, I can save that money gradually. So I'm saying this to say that you can save gradually from your skill. When you are working for 35 years, you must have developed a I skill. Really you have a skill. You can convert it to a consulting assignment. Then you save gradually. Then you can start the business. 
So I'm saying this to say that you can seek the advice from yourself. All right, so let me let me let me just hand up with the with the answer. I'm saying that, all right, since you cannot get to all right, you can put some things together that can bring some money. Like I talk about writing proposals and some of those things and so on. Raise donor agency fund. You have your earning in that. Your earning, you put your earning together. You use it to start a business. And you start the business small. And you want the business to grow. And your skill also come handy. Someone that has worked for 35 years, I believe that you must have, uh, I mean, be equipped with one skill or the other. You can also market that skill. You raise some money from that skill. And of course, some people, family members, children that they have raised, they can ask those children to uh, give them some money to start business. Uh, average people who have raised uh, uh, children that are working graduates, some of them are abroad, can raise at least two million, three million from their children. In fact, the parents, if in some cases, can say, okay, I will return the money. But some people can say, okay, I want this student, because they have trained those children. Take Kuteba de Dagba. You can raise money from your children. You can raise money from people that are close to you. You can raise money from your skill. You can raise money from your professional fees to start the business you want to do. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much, sir. <laughs> uh, for Mr. Pastor Shulanke. Um, I think what, what we are doing here today is part of empowerment, learning. That's what we are doing here today. And um, we not only do this kind of training that will inspire you to take, to make a move and to, you know, achieve things that could make you successful in retirement. We also teach skills. For instance, we a um, few months back, we did um, training on exports, I mean webinar. Webinar on exports, on mini importation. And I think the next one, we are going to do training on how to do aquarium. And we link you up with people who can mentor you. We, we, we've been doing that. From that, you can start a business. It's possible. And then we do quarterly training and sensitization, physical training and sensitization. And government has empowered some people. Government has empowered to, uh, some, some people to do a uh, fish farming, some people soap making, for some, you know, um, making of fascinators and things like that. We have done, we have done quite a number of uh, skill, uh, skill acquisition programs. And then uh, we have also introduced some people to uh, WAPA, Ministry of uh, Women Affairs and Poverty Alleviation. Some people have been empowered with uh, machines, grinding machines, sewing machines, uh, popcorn making machines. So government is actually doing something along that line. So that's just a compliment to what uh, our facilitator has told us today. I want to believe that we have learned a lot. Our time is fast spent. That's the last comment we are going to take. I'm just going to invite someone now to appreciate our facilitator. You know, this is a very, very uh, powerful presentation. I am fired up myself. So let's have someone to appreciate him on behalf of the head of service of Lagos State and Mr. Governor. Maybe we should have, let's have Mrs. Odeja back. Mrs. Odeja, please kindly unmute. And appreciate our okay. facilitator. Okay, thank you. On behalf of the governor, the executive governor, the deputy governor, the ESCO, 
body of permanent secretaries and the workforce of Lagos State. Really, we want to thank you, Dr. Mosaku Johnson, for the you, illuminating session you gave us this morning. Uh, we are grateful to God for granting you the wisdom. And we are also grateful to God for making all of us to be alive and giving thank us you. the opportunity to attend this. And we cannot but thank the new head of service who did not yank this program off. He decided to continue. And I pray that by God's grace, all that he does will prosper too. And uh, the permanent secretary office of the uh, PSO and our, our indefatigable director of service, Mrs. Drew Dollar, and our staff. They are wonderful set of people. They have really, really rejuvenate and innovate the department. Somebody like me, I knew when the department started and what was happening. But by now, they have gone uh, out of uh, expectations, I want to say. They are really, really helping servicing and uh, those of us that have retired. Uh, we can't thank you enough. But uh, we pray that Almighty God will reward all your efforts with resounding successes. And I pray that those of us that are retired enjoying this program will also continue to, be, to enjoy it to the fullest of our good old ages in the mighty name of Jesus. So thank you. Thank you, Dr. Masaku. We'll be looking forward to having you on several other uh, platforms by God's grace. And thank you, Mrs. Jodola extend our sincere gratitude to the state government. God bless us all. Good morning, all. Bye. Thank you, Thank you very much, ma'am. So on that note, I want to say a very big thank you to Mr. Governor and his deputy for always approving this program. Our newly appointed head of service who was sworn in yesterday and the permanent secretary Okay, let me mention the name of our newly appointed uh, head of service, Mr. Olabo Diaguru. And uh, a big thank you also to Permanent Secretary Public Service Office, Mrs. Sukomi Uyibola, and the entire team of Post Service Department. I want to say a very big thank you for sustaining this program and ensuring that um, we keep impacting the lives of our retirees. Thank you all. And then I want to say a big thank you again to Dr. Mosaku for this powerful thank presentation. You. I know that five hours is not enough for you to, you know, fire up our retirees and ensure that they are not retired, but they are refired. Yes. <laughs> Definitely, we always bring you back. It's always a pleasure to have you on this call. Thank you very much. Thank you, ma And I want to say a very big thank you to all our participants on this call today. All our retired permanent secretaries, retired CEOs of parastatals, retired directors, and all serving officers on this call, everyone. Thank you very much for always being part of this program. You are a source of encouragement. Without you, there is no way we can continue this program. We want to say thank you and God bless you. Like we usually do, I'm going to change the setting now so that all of us can exchange pleasantries. Let us all put on our videos. And let me re request that uh, Dr. Mosaku, if you please stop sharing his. Uh, slides so that all the participants we can see each other's faces and exchange pleasantries. Thank you very much, sir. So I've changed the setting. We can all see each other's faces now. Yeah. Can Morning. all Thank you very much. Morning.
Thank you very much. Thank you very much for joining. A doesn't make a Thank you. Thank you. God bless us. I love you. Thank you so much. I'm very our beautiful faces. I can't I can't remember. I'm about to lie down. Good morning, ma. Good morning, ma. <laughs> okay, good morning. Mr. Mrs. Yeah, Rudola Ekaro. You see your faces. Ekaro, yeah, 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 yeah. thanks for joining. Yeah. Let me see your face. It's been a while. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> Good morning, Carol. 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 We appreciate your efforts, ma'am. We thank God. Uh, you thank you, you very much. Thank you, Andre. Mm. Mrs. Amodu Mokinio. Thank you, Mr. Mm. We appreciate you. Mm. Mrs. Sabasa. <laughs> My sister, I'm okay. You know, I'm okay. 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 i Yes, ma'am. I don't know. 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 I so next next guy my god's grace okay Hey, start video. Hello. Hello. Mrs. Okay, so I, I, I want to end the meeting now. All right. Thanks. So until another two weeks, that yeah, we are going to treat another topic Thank on you. All right. our health. Thank you very much all for joining. Hello, I saw a goodbye. Bye. 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 Bye.